Hey guys, what's going on? Lucky here. So as you can see over my right shoulder, um, not everything can be cream puffs and hot rods. Every once in a while, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. So what we have here is a 2006, uh, I think it's a Wrangler. It's a Jeep, so it doesn't really matter. It's a Jeep. And the problem is he had some, I mean, it's kind of hard to say. Sometimes you just got to do the CSI and uh, try to figure out where this began. Generally, when I see stuff like this, and I've seen it a few times, what I start with is aftermarket. Um, Jeep been around for a long time. I've never seen Jeep spontaneously combust for no reason whatsoever. So uh, yeah, look at the aftermarket. Apparently he had some aftermarket LED lights, like a light bar installed on the hood, but that was like seven years ago. Um, the car was in storage for many years. He got it back, um, loves the thing, was rolling it. Everything was good, driving it around. Then he took it and had a pretty cool suspension setup set on there, rims, tires, lift kit. So, I mean, it is a cool little Jeep set up good. Um, I see stuff like it has aftermarket uh, lights. It has a compressor mounted over there. Now, I'm just looking for aftermarket. I'm not necessarily knowing that this is what caused the fire. But uh, the story goes, rumor has it, that a customer was at work. A co-worker went to leave. End of day, I assume. And noticed that the lights were flashing. Possibly the LED lights on the, on the, on the uh, hood. I got a peek at those. The light bar up there. They were flashing. And uh, he said, oh, that's weird. And went downstairs. Luckily, there was a fire extinguisher close by because he said smoke was billowing out of the wheel wells and the engine seal and stuff. And this is what happened. Um, that is a burnt up mess. Um, what I see here is we have an aftermarket stereo. So there are some amps in there. We have some fuses here. They don't look blown. I can't really tell just because of the damage. Oh, maybe one of them is blown, the other one's not. Either way, if it's fused, it should protect itself. So I would say, because this does have a fuse set up here, that this part is just melted from fire. Um, other things, I see wires on here that have gotten so hot they've turned to ash. Like this right here, this is the interior light. Now I got, pretty hot the wires all the shielding has melted off the wire but the wire is not broken here's a wire that's broken like it got so hot the wire let go that leads me to believe that the fire is you know has something to do with this because uh like i said just burning plastic isn't going to melt wire and this harness right here looks like it goes to um the compressor as I pull on it, I see stuff moving over there. There's a couple of large wires and they're gone. But once again, you can't really confirm that any of this has to do with that. This harness, which is kind of poorly done. Um, well, it's not poorly done, but there's a cleaner way to do this. You don't have to stuff, stuff three feet of wire in the back. Um, so some of the other stuff I see are, uh, like I said, the compressor harness goes directly to the battery. There's a trigger wire there, it's ignition trigger. That, um, it has the LED lights in the front, aftermarket LEDs, but they don't really appear to be damaged. No, actually, as I look here, you can see that these wires are starting to overheat too from the headlights. That's pretty common when you do aftermarket headlights. Uh, we need to run those through a relay, so we may look into that. So, we might not get to the bottom of this, but I'm very confident that it was aftermarket wiring that did it. Um, let's see, what is this harness? We'll discover this together. So, uh, ARB, so that's for the compressor. Here's a relay, so that's protected. None of these wires really show any melting or anything overheating. Has a low pressure switch, which generally means, well, actually this is an air coupler right here. Um, I don't think it, keeps air. I don't think it turns on automatically. It only turns on if the 
key is on. So probably not the compressor is protected. Um, I'm gonna lean towards LEDs or potentially stereo because that wire is here and it is burnt all the way down into the car. But once again, it could have been something like rats ate through some wires. I mean, like I said, the car was in storage for some time. And then when those wires started to short out, it melted the shielding of the wiring harness, which then made the wires melt into each other. And once they melted into each other and you have a power source here, then things are gonna, you know, it's gonna escalate from there. Um, I see that the wires for the fog lights come through right here. Not super clean, but honestly, not the worst thing I've seen. And these wires aren't broken. They, the shieldings burn off of them, but they're not broken. So if this was a shorted out wire, most likely it would have turned into a little little arc welder and they would have just broken, just burn out all the way, but they're not. Right through the middle of that melted garbage, those wires are still good. So probably not the dash fog lights. Here's a ground, but once again, if this ground was a short, it would be a different color and it would be a mess but it's hard to tell if this is electrical short. It actually looks like just, you know, burning plastic. So once again, um, I'm gonna actually dig those fuses out of that stereo because I would like to know what caused this out of that stereo harness, amp harness, and uh, see if they're 80 amperes or 100 amperes or something because they should have blown. But either way, we'll get to the bottom of that. The good news is, um, the car totaled, they wrote the customer an insurance, a check. And so he had some money to fix it and I'm going to fix it. I was able to find a complete replacement harness for this out of a same year make and model with all the same features and, and options. So I'm just going to swap out the engine harness, which is melted, trans control harness and the main harness. So I would say that these are not normally a very, very glamorous job, but, uh, Hey, you know what? It's something to do. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is start undoing everything in the engine compartment, get everything hanging over this fender. And when that is done, I will uh, then uh, go into the car, start pulling out the dash, taking the dash apart. I wanna check the back of the instrument panel, check the ECU, see if there's any melted wires going to that stuff. The ECU is actually over there, so I'm sure it's, well, it's possibly fine. Yeah, the bad side of this is all these harness, these wires were melted together with voltage in them. And most of those wires are sensor wires that go to the ECU, which have now gotten 12 volts and ground spiked to them. So it could be ugly, but for now, let's start taking this thing apart. Set down. This is the fender wrap I like to use. I have chucked this thing up in my lathe so it would be easier to work with. Nice. this harness here. Stereo harness here. We will take that apart later or get a uh, continuity tester and see if those fuses are blown. This is another aftermarket harness. I don't 
Let's see a fuse on this one. So this is an unfused aftermarket harness that, wow, these are burned all the way through. That's 12 volts and ground. Running 12 volts and ground next to each other, not always a great idea. If there's a problem and the shield starts to burn off, the first thing they do is weld together. But I don't see a relay here. I see 12 volts and ground and there's no fuse on this harness. There is a ground side and a voltage side. So let's look a little more into that right now. There's two large gauge wires come into this. Oh, look, the fuse is right here. All right, so this is a good spot. Yeah, see, there's the two large, the 12, the black and the ground welded together right there. And this is power for the relay, or for the compressor, which has a pressure switch on it and could have very possibly just turned on automatically. And, uh, yeah. So here's the deal. Here is a 12 volt, or who knows how many volt, but yeah, here is a 40 amp fuse in the harness between the compressor and the battery. The problem is it's fused eight inches or 12 inches from the compressor. So if there's a problem here between the compressor and the fuse, the fuse breaks and protects the compressor. However, if there's a problem between the fuse and the battery, it burns from here all the way to the battery and there's no hope of it ever, ever shutting off or fuse blowing and putting in, and preventing the uh, electrical short. So um, basic instructions on most electronics always say the same thing. Fuse it at the battery. The idea is not convenient, easy for you to get to. The idea is if there's a problem anywhere in the circuit, it's protected at the battery. If this fuse was over there and a problem occurred between the compressor or the firewall or rats ate it or whatever caused it, the first thing it would have done was blown the fuse at the battery. The next time you go to use it, it doesn't work. You get out and then check the fuse and find out you have a problem as opposed to coming out and seeing your cars on fire. So I'm pretty confident that's where the problem came from. This thing got so hot, it literally, you can look right there, it blew the wires apart. Like, like an arc welder. Melted everything. So pretty confident that this is where the problems are. This stuff is just ash now. It's just ash. Yep, I'm confident that that's where it came from. So I will be saving that to uh, give to the customer. Uh, not putting it back in, that's for sure. If we get another harness, I'll put it back in. And then... And then... Uh, fuse it at the battery. So yeah, quite interesting. So that's an AC motor. It looks like the TPS. This is the MAP sensor. This is the fuel pressure sensor. 
and this is just a reference for possibly Tim. Uh, it's four wires, that's a, it's the O2 sensor, which makes sense as the exhaust manifold, I think it's right there. Don't know a lot. Here's a second O2 sensor. Plug. There's only six of them, so one of my concerns is the amount of heat that got these back to, so we'll be paying special attention to that. Usually if they've gotten too much heat to them, first thing that goes is the plug. It's kind of funny when I was unhooking or looking, inspecting the replacement harness, I looked and this little cover right here had damage to it. Wondering what caused that. And as I start to take this thing apart, I see that it's a little bit of a bear to get apart.
All right, this looks like anything I can't uh, paint up. This is a concern, but it looks fine. All right. So now we'll just up here clean up. Oh no, it's just some repaint up here. Just what color it should be. Just off some heat. So this hood will be coming off and getting some paint work done to it. So yeah, I feel good about seeing where the problem came from, being the fact that uh, there was a main wire, a large gauge wire that wasn't fused at the battery. Most likely, I mean, even if it was a, a situation where maybe critters got in there and chewed on the wires, um, having a fuse not at the battery is a recipe for disaster. So always, always fuse at the battery. All right, so that is a wrap on this episode of, I don't know, put the fire out on the Jeep. I don't know what to call this episode. Um, obviously, I need to get some paint mixed up. Uh, luckily, there is a paint coat on here somewhere. I will find that. Um, if you can tell right there that the firewall is a different color than the exterior, so it's single stage there, and they clear coat the outside. So I'll probably get something to try to match that, blend it in, make it look good. Um, before I spray anything. Obviously, I will clean up the rest of the hood. I know this side, I would probably just probably be able to blend the center section right there that saw some heat, but the outside has like a decal or something on it. The whole center of it is black. So that's easy enough to uh, figure out. Um, so before I put the harness in, like I said, I gotta do a little paint work. I gotta go get that material and get that straightened out. Thanks a lot for watching, you guys. Don't forget to subscribe, leave some comments. If you're working on a fire hazard like this thing, post some stuff, tag me. I'm Mobile Tech Lucky on Instagram. And uh, yeah, I wanna check it out. Stay safe out there and uh, yeah, don't get burnt, if you know what I mean.